Welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of the Mindless Horror Podcast, the podcast where we talk about anything and everything horror. Anything and everything. Anything and everything. Um, this is my co-host, Sammy. He's back. Hello. After a week off. Um, yeah. And today... Uh, today. Yeah, today. Yep. <laughs> we today, have puberty. Yep. Today we are, <laughs> we are joined by another guest for Summer of Guests who I contacted uh, pretty last minute to join the slate of Summer of Guests, and I'm glad he did join. Uh, today we got Eddie Tainment. From Edutainment. <laughs> <laughs> we got Eddie from Edutainment. Edutainment from Edutainment. No, Eddie from Eddie. Yeah, there we go. Are um, you Edutained? Are you Edutained? Damn yeah. right. <laughs> All right. So today we're going to be, of course, uh, talking to Eddie about what he's been up to. Uh, he's been on a long hiatus for a while. And it uh, looks like he's going to be getting back in the game for the summer. So we're looking forward to that. We're going to catch up with him, see what his plans are for this summer. Uh, and then we're going to talk a little bit about the new Child's Play reboot that came out this past weekend. Um, give our thoughts about the movie, what we thought of it, and uh, what can we expect from the future of that franchise. So, first and foremost, we're going to start off with you, Eddie. How you been, man? Been good, man. Um, like I was telling you guys earlier, uh, I just got back from vacation. I was out for, for like three days, two nights. It was really last minute, but it was my birthday. Um, so I decided to go on a solo trip all by myself. Um, which All was a great time. by myself. Damn. <laughs> Sammy, those vocals, man. And I got to tell you, we should hit the road with those. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I ended up going to Orlando. I'm an annual pass holder. So I was like, you know, what can I do that's an affordable trip? Looked on Travelocity, found myself um, some uh, hotel and flight and left for a few days. Got to ride the new Hagrid coaster, which was, it was pretty good. Um, and just experience going on vacation by myself at, at theme parks. Got a couple videos that I'm editing and putting up as well. So this past week we saw one video of yours that came out, which was, of course, the light show that they do at the Hogwarts Castle. They do the same thing here. Um, what, what else can we expect on the channel this week as far as content or in the next coming weeks? Um, so the next video that should be posting tomorrow um, is I, I did a, a tour of a prop shop at Universal Studios. Um, and that, that prop shop basically has a bunch of props from like the rides, movies, um, and different events like Halloween Horror Nights, Mardi Gras. In addition to that prop shop also partners with a local antique shop called the Rooster Coop. So you can find some actual like real antiques like uh, World War I um, military helmet and some other crazy stuff. So I do a tour through that and there's a ton of Halloween Horror Nights uh, goodies as far as like signs and different mem memorabilia that you can can no longer really find, but you can find it in that prop shop. I think that's really interesting that they deal with prop shops such like that. We don't I don't think we have that over here, which would be smart of them to open up over here because that'd be for collectors of HHN and stuff like that who want to find past stuff would be uh, an awesome kind of way to build up their memorabilia and stuff like that. So I think that's yeah. really cool. Oh, oh, and um, so I may be doing a giveaway with something that I got from there, but uh, that'll come up on, on the, the video. Um, in addition, they, they have a Classic Monsters Cafe. I did a tour of Classic Monsters Cafe. I'm not sure if you guys have it in, on the West Coast, but Classic Monsters Cafe at Universal Studios in Orlando is exactly what it is. It's a cafe where you could go get like you know a little food. It's a quick, quick uh, eat, eat spot, but they have four different locations in the actual cafe that you can eat, and each one of them is themed differently. One of them is sweet, uh, themed like uh, what's called Monster of the Black Lagoon, one of them's themed like outer space. One of them's themed like Frankenstein, and one of them's themed like the Wolfman. So um, it's actually pretty cool. I do a, a full tour of of the four different locations where you can eat at, as well as some of the options. And of course, the options for for dining are all kind of like spoofs off of different like movies. So it's like uh, 
what's it called? One of them's like Wolfman Fang Fries, you know, things like that. Obviously, it's just fries, but they name them different ways. Another video that I that I got is for for Hagrid's as well. And I think that's all. I think here to hear first exclusive of what's coming to the channel on Eddie Tamich's channel in the next coming week. So be on the lookout for Eddie Tamich's channel. He just got back from Universal Studios Orlando on a good vacation. Got a lot of footage. Rode the new Haggard ride. Tell us a little bit about more of that Haggard ride. I've seen footage on YouTube. It looks amazing, man. Tell me your experience on it, what you felt going up to it, how long you had to wait. Because I know the wait times for that ride have been insane lately. Yeah. So it opened up on my birthday, which was June 13th, and the wait was 10 hours uh, is what, they were, what people were recording that they actually waited to get on the ride. I rode it the first Monday after it opened. Um, so that Monday I went... Um, did early park opening, but it was at Universal Studios and Hagrid's is actually at Islands of Adventure So I did the early park opening and got to Islands of Adventure around like 945 and 945 the ride still wasn't up. It didn't get up till 12 o'clock 12 something roughly and then I didn't actually end up riding it up till 2 p.m So all in all I waited around like four hours a little bit over four hours, maybe um, but the ride itself is an extremely unique roller coaster experience it's extremely cool there's a bunch of scenes that you stop at and there's seven launches in the in the whole entire roller coaster one oh, wow. of those launches actually being backwards i so, did see that on youtube yeah so not only do you end up going backwards on the roller coaster there's a launch midway while you're actually going backwards so the ride vehicle and the ride itself are really cool. Um, you do get a really cool feeling like you're actually on a motorbike. So I don't ride bike myself, but I've seen people ride motorcycle. And when they when they turn, you lean really, really far. And you get that, that feeling on the coaster when you're taking turns. Like the, the, the sidecar, when you're in the sidecar, which is what I rode, like there, there's a pond. You feel like you could almost like touch the water from how much you lean over. Um, it's really cool. And then um, just those those launches, the last launch ends up taking, I believe, around 50 miles per hour. So the ride itself, I, I, I don't recommend waiting four hours to anybody. I, I'm a little spoiled when it comes to lines, but this one time was worth it. Um, the ride itself is well worth it. And probably I'm giving myself a little bit of time to settle in and maybe ride it one more time before I say this 100 percent. But it's probably my favorite ride now at Universal Studios. That's good to hear, man. Yeah, I've been I've been seeing a lot of footage, a lot of people reviewing it and stuff like that, and it looks like it's a really amazing fun ride. Um, I can't believe a lot of what they did. The Hagrid alone just looks very realistic and stuff like that. So they did an amazing job with Hagrid. Um, how was how was the rest of the park though compared to that that though? I mean, I know that usually the same. It was like kind of an example here was uh, when Galaxy's Edge first opened up for reservations. The rest of Disneyland wasn't as packed. Uh, as it usually is because everybody was using their Galaxy's Edge uh, reservation. So how was the rest of the park compared uh, to that one ride? Um, packed. This time of the year at Universal in Orlando is packed, man. So although the majority of the focus is on the Hagrid ride, there's plenty of other things going on throughout the park. And a lot of the people that get in line, you'll have huge groups get in line that will give up halfway and they decide to go enjoy the rest of the park. So yeah, the, the people that are, that are in line for Hagrid's are dispersing amongst the park on a regular basis. So nothing really is much slower than it regularly is just because of this. Um, the, the crowds were huge. And also while I was there, the weather was terrible. It kept on freaking like raining. I had like a monsoon the first day that I was there. I did see that on social media that you put, um, that on that poncho on which i thought was pretty funny yeah. Uh, yeah it was terrible uh so what are your plans so now that you went to the park uh for the summer uh two things i want to ask you uh hhn really did you see hhn construction and what are your plans for going back to the park during halloween horror nights um so i'll be there for halloween horror nights i'll be there opening weekend i did not see any of the construction most of the construction for Halloween Horror Nights is actually pretty well hidden there's some behind the MIB building when I was there in March I saw a little bit of it which is usually where where they have the horrors of Blumhouse tent um, I saw that construction is already starting back there I'm not sure what house is going back there this year but this time around I did not because since I went by myself I did a lot of a lot of uh, solo rider lines 
and the solo rider lines skip the whole entire queue. You go basically straight to the front. Um, so you miss out on any opportunities to catch any glimpse of like the back lot while you're in line. So um, I meant to try to look for some construction, but no, nah, I wasn't able to like just stumble upon it. So nothing's up yet over there. That means, well, a lot of the majority of the mazes there, though, they, they, they take place in sound stages, though, don't they? Yeah, so the, the major houses are going to be in st sound stages. You already got Stranger Things. That's going to be in a sound stage. Um, I'm pretty sure that the classic monsters is going to be inside of a sound sound stage too. So that's stuff that we can't really see in advance. Yeah. Um, but there are like about there's three sprung tents usually. So the three sprung tents you could usually kind of like get them from like an angle if you're really looking. Yeah. But I I, I didn't go and like search it out, so I didn't get get to really see it. But um, yeah, I'll be there opening weekend. I'll be there like the first the first like eight days um well the first weekend but i'll be there for eight days sweet sweet so if you guys are fans of edutainment obviously you should be um go subscribe to his channel put on the bell notifications or if you guys are going to be at the event in orlando the first opening weekend be sure to go ahead and find edutainment he'll be around walking around going through everything checking everything out filming for his channel and stuff like that Pretty sure he wouldn't be a stranger to say hi to a couple of the fans, so that'd be cool. And he'll keep yeah. you detained. Thank you. Yeah, I'll keep you detained. Oh, and I did get recognized at the park this this time. Did you it really? Awesome. Yeah, it was surreal, man. Hey, doesn't it doesn't feel was, weird. Yeah, it feels extremely weird. And I, I've gotten recognized at Bush Gardens once or twice, which was a little bit more normal because it's my local event. Yeah. But you know that Halloween Horror Nights in Universal Studios is pretty saturated as far as like YouTubers, so. To be noticed, and mostly at the size of like YouTuber that I am, um, it was a lady that was coming the opposite way from me in the Hagrid's ride. Yeah, and she, she was British. She actually came from from overseas and came to the U.S. and apparently, in preparation for the the trip, stumbled upon one of my videos. Sweet man, that's cool, yeah. man. That's awesome. Yeah, even even people from overseas are still like looking at your stuff, and I think that's cool. The red coats. Yeah. The red coats. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, man, I'm really excited to see what's to come to the channel in the next couple of weeks and those, what's coming for the night for the hopefully the next summer stuff like that. Um, summer is is here, so we got a lot of stuff that's going to be happening on um, both ends of the of the of the coasts and um, yeah. So just keep an eye on both channels because we're going to surprise you with a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff coming in the works. Um, next thing we're going to talk about the Child's Play reboot. Me and Sammy, uh, as of this recording, saw it today. Um. And yeah, so what did you what did you think of the Child's Play reboot, um, Eddie? All right, so I already know I'm gonna go slightly against your what, what you guys felt. Now I didn't think it was great, but I didn't <laughs> think it was terrible either. Um, so I watched it opening night, and the the Chucky doll itself looks odd. The face. Um, it just looks weird, but so to, to me, the thing that was the biggest displeasing part of the movie was that, uh, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, <laughs> it's no longer a serial killer's spirit that's within the body of the, of the, of, of the toy. That's not really a uh, spoiler. They kind of mentioned that in the trailer. Oh, do they? Okay. So you're, you're clear for that. Cool. Um, but I'm sure we're probably going to say something. So. No, yeah, football and spoilers for anyone who hasn't seen Child's Play yet. I mean, we're going to talk details about the movie. We're going to talk about our reviews, our likes, dislikes. So just football warning you before we even go further. Yeah, so I, I'm not a huge fan um, of the, like, you know, iRobot type of approach. I like the movie iRobot, but that that's the one and only time that I like that approach of technology turning on human you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I feel like eventually it is going to happen. But <laughs> oh yeah, they the freaking the, they've been preparing us for this for years since Terminator yeah. came out, so it's coming. Yeah, it's going to be a Tesla. That's what it's going to be. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. It's going to yeah. be a Tesla. It's going to be Amazon. <laughs> Come on. Oh yeah, that too. Yeah, it's going to be like an Amazon drone. But um, it's going to be Alexa. Yeah. <laughs> hey Alexa. But um. Right now, somebody's in their room, and I said that, and their Alexa's responding. <laughs> <laughs> but I, 
I didn't think it was terrible. I thought it was decent. It actually got pretty decent reviews too. I mean, from from a Rotten Tomatoes and a, a viewer perspective, I think it's somewhere around like sixty percent, which is decent for a horror movie. Yeah, it's in the sixties. Um, last I checked. Yeah, and I I thought it had some decent jumps. Um, nothing crazy, but all in all, I enjoyed it. I, so, I would I would argue it didn't really have that many decent jumps. I probably only jumped once that I remember. So currently, you, Child's you Play. Once is decent enough. Say that again. <laughs> I said him jumping once is decent enough. Right. So currently, <laughs> Child's Play with critics sits at a sixty-one percent, and with audiences sixty-four percent. So it it did it did pretty decent, mildly for a for a horror movie, and um, I don't know. I am just I don't know. I I really like the original one. And um, the the voice of Chucky, what's his name, Don Mancini, he is an iconic. And don't get me wrong, I I love I love Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill is probably my favorite, one of my favorite actors, voice actors. And um, and I think for for me, he he really saved this movie. His voice is just creepy when he was starting to go like you know rogue and stuff like that. So that was kind of a, a big issue. Uh, that kind of was like, well, that's what that's the part that makes me actually like the movie, but. Uh, I don't know. It, it started really slow for me, and the buildup was kind of it, it was getting there. Um, so in the in the beginning of the movie, we see of course them building the the doll the dolls in um, where is it Vietnam, and uh, one of the guys is just kind of daydreaming and stuff, and then the guy fires him, but then he tells him to finish that doll up, which was actually a bad mistake. He should have just he should have just fired him and just told him to go. But he finishes the doll, but he ends up programming it to go rogue, so it just does the opposite of what it's supposed to do. And um, so we see, we end up seeing that happen, and then after that guy actually ends up committing suicide um, because he knows that if, if something were to happen that he'd get blamed for it or something like that or he'd get arrested or, or sentenced to death or I don't know how they do stuff over there, but he just knew that something would happen to him, so he just ended up committing suicide kind of lost it all he looked like he was probably uh, homeless too because the way the guy the boss put it that he, he found him on the streets and gave him this job and stuff like that which um yeah and um that that's one of the things that i have a that i have problems with is some random guy that they hired off the street knows how to write and adjust code yeah no typically those computer chips are made in the u.s just in yeah. terms of like accuracy what they'd be making but, in Vietnam would be like just a basic doll. Yeah, but even then, <laughs> like this this guy working on a factory line, we're supposed to assume knows how to how to basically correct code and you know change and move different you know safeguards that are installed there. I mean, in most cases, your standard employee won't even have that type of access. So that that was part that it was just too easy. For it to occur, it wasn't even done on accident. It was done on purpose. Yeah, no, I agree. That is really. They they kind of made it too kind of like okay, how the hell does this guy know code? That's kind of my mind mindset was at that scene. I was like, all right, well, he just said he got him off the streets, and this guy just happens to know code. Did mm-hmm. I mean does he have a background in code, or does he, you know, was he doing code and then like he got kicked off to the streets and then they hired him to do? I don't know, but. Um, you see that the eyes turn red instead of blue. Um, another big issue I had of this movie was the way the doll looked. I hated the way the face looked. I, I just don't know why. I did, did not like the face, and I still think that the original Chucky from the 80s looks a lot better than the one with 2019. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I agree with you 100%. The, the look of the doll, I, I, I understand they had to change it to change the story and you know make it kind of like a new approach, but I, I was not pleased with the, with the look of this doll. Yeah. So from my understanding, an article that I read, the original producer and writer of the films, um, he wanted nothing to do with this movie because he was pissed that they uh, – I think they went behind the original – whoever the – because I heard the Chucky rights are kind of up in the air, so like anyone could have grabbed them. And that's why there's a lot of changes in this movie as to uh, different stuff as far as changing the good guy doll to a buddy doll. Um, and of course they, they went a whole different route as to a guy getting possessed going or, you know, a a voodoo. He was a serial killer who knew voodoo and put his soul into the, to the body so he can stay alive. Uh, now they went to a rogue AI and stuff like that. And 
from so, my uh, so from what I've read that the producer and writer wanted nothing to do with this movie because of all the changes that were coming and they kind of went behind their backs and didn't really tell them about it. So they wanted nothing to do with it, and Don Mancini didn't want anything to do with this as well. Uh, and he's been voicing Chucky since the very beginning. Um, he's voiced Chucky in every incarnation that they've done uh, except this movie. And this is not a uh, fun fact, too. This is not Mark Hamill's first time voicing Chucky. Um, yeah. if, you, if you recall, there was an episode of Robot Chicken, actually, where uh, they, they parodied uh, a Chucky thing, and Mark Hamill actually voiced Chucky on that. So I thought that was a cool little fun fact. Yeah, and um, so two things from what you just said. So, yeah, they had they changed up from from the the like type of doll and made this one a buddy doll, but it, it that's also a reference to the original doll that inspired the original Chucky movie. Um, the, I, I believe it was like a buddy doll or something of that nature. So that it's a reference to that. In addition to yeah, the 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 people that are tied to the originals are completely against this, and there's actually a hashtag out there. Hashtag not my Chucky. So yeah. you could actually go on there and check out all the hashtags and everything. So some of the original actors, as well as the directors and people behind the original Chucky, okay. um, are are the are basically completely against it. No, I I also what I really didn't like was I think they tried really hard to make it relatable and futuristic. Like, not everyone's gonna have that product in their home. I forget the name of the company. It's like a yeah. It was like a. What was it again? Caslin. Caslin, yeah. Yeah. It was kind of like a ripoff of Amazon in my way. Yeah, because not everyone's going to have that TV, have those speakers, and, like, all that different things, because uh, the U.S. wouldn't allow that under a competitive market. So I think that's another thing that kind of bothered me as an economist. Yeah, and uh, the the family with, with Andy, they're kind of a poor family from the looks of it, and how did she have all the Caslin products? Yeah, yeah, no, no doubt. Cause I, I, and I know she works at this the store that sells all those products and stuff like that. But even with the discount and stuff like that, like if she were to get from this store, just theoretically speaking, it'd still be it still cost her a quick dollar to buy a lot of this um, stuff that she has. Um, yeah, but from what we're seeing, this, this family looks like they're kind of barely getting around. It looks like they've probably moved around a lot. Um, and I know in the original Chucky, uh, in the original Child's Play, if you did watch it they do go and explain that the family is kind of poor that's why they live where they live and stuff like that and um yeah uh but i don't know i mean it was it was a really it it was like a really slow start and you know the whole you know the killer dog as you can see throughout the movie it starts getting worse and worse as like you know as he sees stuff like they're watching the texas chainsaw massacre 2 and he starts seeing the killing and violence in that and then he starts kind of picking up some you know inspiration off that and starts getting a little rogue more uh, you know th- of course the stuff with the cat you know he starts trying to choke the cat to death because Andy says that you know he didn't like the cat and all that uh, and the same thing with the boyfriend you know uh, Aubrey Plaza's you know boyfriend in that movie you know he was a dick to uh, Andy he was abusive to Andy and you know you know Chucky sees that and, and starts kind of building a mind of its own and of course the, the you know the theme around the whole movie is of course uh, Chucky still being obsessed with uh, wanting to be Andy's friend and stuff like that. Just so in the original one, it was so uh, Chucky can get uh, Andy to use him as a uh, a host for his soul, and yeah. um, you know so take over his body. Again. And in this one, it was just more the AI wanting to be Andy's friend and stuff like that, and trying to take care of him and stuff. Which in a way, it gives the AI kind of a, a different personality from what we've seen in the original Chucky, where uh, you know. Chucky's original goal in the originals was just to try to find a new host, and in this one, it's just it's just the robot becoming a little too attached to its um, its owner and want, trying to protect it and stuff like that. So in a way, is Chucky a bad guy in this movie? Uh, you know, some people would say yes because he does kill a couple innocent people that didn't deserve to die, uh, and then some people would say no because he. In a, re- in a way, he was just kind of doing his job. He was protecting Andy in a way, you know? I mean, yeah, there yeah. was some moments later on in the movie where, you know, Chucky started seeing Andy as an enemy instead of a friend because he didn't want anything to do with him. But I think Chucky was just trying to get to him as to, like, I- I'm just trying to be your friend. I'm trying to protect you and stuff like that. I'm trying to protect you from people who don't like you and stuff like that. Um, because that's a reoccurring theme throughout this whole movie is... Um, he, you know, you don't like him. He hurts you and stuff like that. So, 
Um, that's that's the way at least I saw it. I mean, um, and and then I have to touch on on the uh, the deaths in this movie. I will say though, were really 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 good. Um, my only problem with the deaths, and this is just me being a dead meat fan, and I, I watch a lot of dead meat videos and stuff like that, but a lot of the deaths they they're off screen, so you don't actually see sometimes like the penetration in some of them. Like, there, a lot of them are just off screen. So, like, when someone's about to die, it will cut to black, and then you just see kind of the aftermath. About the only graphic death that you do see is, of course, the um, the boyfriend who gets killed by the lawnmower uh, with yeah. the Christmas lights. You see his death, and then you see a lot of the deaths that happen in the uh, the market scene at the very end of the movie. Yeah. And um, so back to, like, the AI kind of, like, evolving and understanding what or thinking you know what andy wants it to do by like watching the cha texas chainsaw massacre and being confused that that is what makes them laugh so i will do something similar um i, I thought that was actually pretty cool i, I like that perspective of the evolution of the chucky doll within the movie because it made it seem like the chucky doll was truly trying to do what was best so i honestly thought at least to some degree or to some point in the movie, the Chucky doll was good and just honestly confused as to, you know, what to do. Yeah. And it was just trying to please Andy. Um, but at, at towards the end of it, it, it just becomes kind of, you know, the, the Chucky doll has evolved past that now. It, yeah, it when no he kills longer, Doreen. Yeah. It no longer wants to please Andy. Now it's got to the point where it, I guess it, it's evolved to the point that it knows that it can't please Andy anymore, and now Andy's an enemy too. Um, but, uh, I mean, so let's challenge you guys to this. What did you guys actually like? So I liked Mark Hamill's, I, I, I'm a huge Mark Hamill fan. I've been, you know, Star Wars, he's great in Star Wars. Um, but my all-time favorite role that Mark Hamill has ever done, of course, is the Joker. I love his Joker. His Joker is probably my all-time favorite incarnation of the Joker. I don't think anyone can ever beat him uh, as far as, you know, bringing the Joker to life, in my, in my opinion, at least. Like, every time I read a comic book and I, hear the, and I see the Joker, I hear Mark Hamill's voice. That's just, it's put into me already. There's been a lot of great Jokers uh, in, the, in the past, don't get me wrong. Like, Heath Ledger is a great on-screen Joker. Um, Jack Nicholson is phenomenal. Um, and there's been a lot of various voices who's done the Joker, but in my mind, Mark Hamill will always be the Joker. Um, and so going into this, when I found out he was voicing Chucky, I had no doubt in my mind that he was going to kill it, which in my opinion, yes, he did kill it because he had some creepy moments in that movie where he would talk and stuff like that. Um, however, mm, something I hated that they kind of did in this movie was the fact that they didn't really let him go super loose until the very end of the movie. Now, from my understanding in the original one, he when he started, you know, he killed, he was like on a nonstop rampage until the very end of the first one. Uh, from when he got unboxed by Andy until like the very end, he killed someone at least. I mean, they kind of did that with this movie, but it, it felt like the kills were too gapped apart. Like, you know, it was... It was the cat, and then a little bit, it was the boyfriend, then we had to wait a little bit longer until, what was the next one? Was it the, uh, was it the, the old lady? The mom? No, the no, mom no, it was the, the uh, janitor. 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 Or the maintenance guy. The maintenance guy, right. And then it was the uh, the old lady, and yeah. stuff like that. Um, so I felt like the kills were a little too far gapped. I, I know with the, um, the other one, it, it was, uh, you know, they were kind of just... Oh, when one when they found out one person died, then like the next day the next person died and stuff like that. It was kind of like it kind of kept you going and kept you in suspense as to okay, who's he gonna kill next? What's gonna happen? Um, yeah. But I did like, however, I did like one thing that they they did keep keep true, even though the doll didn't look uh, very good as far as the face goes. But they did they kept something true that was original, like and far as far as all Chucky's go, which was everyone's main concern was is the doll gonna be CGI or something? But they kept something true where they actually had eight puppeteers and I think like four dolls or something like that and the doll was an actual doll it was you know not CGI or anything they had actual puppeteers that were moving in and stuff throughout the, the making of this film so I'm glad they stayed true to that uh, factor of it because I think a CGI Chucky wouldn't look as good um, yeah don't get me wrong in the movie I'm gonna use as reference um, I'm not bagging on it I, I love that movie it's a great movie but take a look at Ready Player One when we see that Chucky 
um, that would what it, that's what it would have been like if we had a CGI Chucky in a way. Only because, uh, and I'm not saying it's 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 you know it's a horrible movie or anything. I'm just saying I don't think it looks good compared to what we've seen in the past of Chucky. You know, Chucky we've always just seen as a doll and it's a puppet and stuff like that. And I think practical effects make, make movies come to life more. They make them more uh, a realistic standpoint, in my point of view. I like I prefer practical over CGI in some cases uh, and stuff like that. So I'm glad they stayed uh, true to. Uh, the originals and they kept going with the puppeteer because I remember watching a behind the scenes video they were like that's one thing we have to keep respect of with Chucky is that it's got to always be a puppet uh, instead of CGI because um, it's been a puppet for these so long that uh, we just have to keep that tradition going and stuff like that and that was one challenge that arose when we were making this film was um, how are we gonna do this and you know what what is it gonna be like different this time around and stuff like that so that that was another thing I liked. What about you, Sam? What'd you like? Um. Well, I'm gonna start with one thing I didn't mention on the dislike before I get to something I actually like. I really didn't find Aubrey Plaza as a Mom credible there. mother. Yeah. Like I think it would have been better if they would have rewrote it, such as she was a sister. Maybe the mom died, or the dad, both the parents died, and like she's trying to play that motherly role but still playing the sister. Yeah. Like I felt like that would be more predictable. Um. What more did I like? I think I liked the comedic value. I wanted Chucky to be a little bit more vulgar, but I think he was pretty funny at times. Um, the including of, like, Doreen and the detective was pretty funny. Uh, and I think the addition of, like, the teenage friends, as much as I think it was a cop-out, because that's what a lot of people are doing in horror movies nowadays, where they have, like, a group of teens working together to fight an evil, I think that was a cool aspect to add, just because it made... Um, then it made the movie a little bit more likable. Yeah, it it definitely had that. Uh, towards the end, it had a, a a lot of like a it chapter one feel. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, but I want to talk a little bit a little bit uh, about the ending scene, um, because I was telling him that's where it kind of killed it for me. Um, now we do live in a world now where racism and and fascism mm -hmm. and all this stuff is like it's very heavily put into media that we watch today and stuff like that that's kind of what they're getting these new generation to grow up on and you know i get it racism is bad i totally 100 percent agree you know judging people for who they are and you know what they're into and what they classify themselves as yeah you're not supposed to judge people if whoever they want to be they want to be that's fine i have no problem against that i am not 100 i'm 100 percent on board with all that you know i mean just you know if you want to be who you want to be, that's that's cool. Um, my whole thing was, though, in this one was the fact that um, in the beginning of the movie, they do make a, a regard. Uh, some guy walks into the store, returns his Chucky doll, and he goes, it's a ginger Chucky. This is not what I asked for. I wanted a blonde one and stuff like that. I didn't like the fact that they made multiple Chucky dolls of ethnicities. Um, because in my my case, in the original movie, it was always just one doll. And that's I think that's how it should have been. And it doesn't matter the ethnicity or, or not. I'm just saying I, I'm more of a fan of, like, the old school movies. So, like, when I watched the movie, it was just one good guy doll. Well, it could have been a comment on capitalism as a whole, though. And the idea of offering multiple different products so you could be able to capitalize on more of the market. Um, and maybe it was a comment on how... Many people release a lot of the same product, even though they're only slightly different. Uh, I mean, yeah. you could make that argument. Or you could make the argument of, well, they wanted inclusivity. But I think it was probably more of a comment on societal values nowadays as opposed to trying to ruin what the original Chucky doll is. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with both of you. I, that It probably was more of a reference to what Sam is talking about, just societal values at this point in time. But at the same time, with you and I, I agree that it was unnecessary and I rather just focus on that one doll yeah um and, and my whole thing was like this like I had some major Iron Man kind of uh stuff going on in my head when they put the new thing in his chest um <laughs> so he could connect to the whole thing like I was like okay that's like an Iron Man move right there that's kind of how they made him more accessible to hack into stuff and stuff like that um but I, I will say this. There was a badass moment I did like where before he went on a murder rampage in that um, that store, 
they're playing that video on the TV of the old man, and then he goes, it's time to play, and then it comes with Chucky on the screen with the red eyes. I thought that was pretty badass. That was a pretty cool moment in there. Um, honestly, though, I would say about the only part I, I really enjoyed, there were some parts that I really enjoyed in this movie, um, but the part that I really liked the most, and I wish they, this is how I wish the movie would have gone, was the very end of the movie where, um, you know, Andy confronts uh Chucky and Aubrey Plaza's character, his mother in the movie, um, and I just think that's how they should have had Chucky throughout the entire movie because, in that Chucky, we saw him. He had a finally different motives where he finally just kind of snapped into trying being Andy's friend and just was like, "Well, fuck it, I'm just gonna start killing people now because uh, it looks like this AI was starting to get of his mind of its own uh, artificial intelligence and um, he looked like he was has his own motives going." And so I wish that they would have went more towards that angle where in this movie we kind of saw Chucky trying to be Andy's friend and it kept trying to go and go and go and they kept recycling and recycling like every time like he Chucky was just trying to be Andy's friend no matter what he did and it, it just kind of at a certain point just bothered me and bugged me like I just wished at, at some point they would have made him snap a little earlier and he would have went on a like bigger bigger murderous rampage like he did in the in the store which I thought was brilliantly shot but one thing that did kill it for me in the store scene was, of course, the cheetah-looking good guy doll, or the buddy doll. I thought that was the dumbest thing ever. Oh, yeah, the the one that was like a teddy bear? Yeah, good I, I thought I thought that was honestly the stupidest thing ever. I, it, that's yeah. just me, though. <laughs> yeah. Nah, I, I agree with you. Once again, I, I would have been better off with just focusing on one. But I, I, I guess, you know... They, they thought that that was necessary. But I guess the, the next thing that – have you guys heard anything about potential, like, follow-ups to this? So, yeah, um, actually I was reading an article on Bloody Disgusting. I, I, and I didn't read too much about it, but uh, the director does have an idea of where he would like to go with the future of this franchise. So it looks like we may potentially be getting a sequel to this, uh, especially because with the ending of the movie, of course, they destroy Chucky once and for all, or at least that's what you think. Uh, they destroy his uh, CPU and AI, but I think what what um, ultimately you can't really kill Chucky because, or at least in this one, because he's already linked up to the cloud, and um, he could just transfer you know his Con evil yeah. intentions into another buddy doll. So he's uh, Ultron. He's Ultron. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, so at the end of, the, of course, at the end of this movie, we do see um, you know they put the the doll back into a place. They're doing a recall of all the buddy dolls because of what happened at the convenience store and stuff like that. And of course, at the very end of the movie, they drop the iconic line, which I was waiting for the entire movie was, "The buddy doll will be your friend to the end." And that's of course that's Chucky's famous line in the movie from, of course, the original one, which is uh, "Chucky, your friend to the end." Um, and I was waiting the whole movie just to hear that, and they kind of threw that in there at the last minute. Um, and at the end, of course, we see the box, and we see the eyes glow red real quick, and then the movie ends. And, of course, they play that little jingle that they played throughout the movie of the Buddy song, which I thought was a little creepy in my opinion, but um, I guess that's what made the movie the movie. Um, but, yeah, there is talks of them doing a sequel. Uh, I don't know if they will greenlight a sequel. I know that the original... Um, the original uh, writers and producers of the original Child's Play are actually working on a TV show to follow up on their uh, Cult of Chucky that was the last one released before this one in their Chucky franchise. So I think they're working on a TV show right now for you know original Chucky fans. Um, so you can look out for that. I don't know when it's supposed to come out, but I know it's in the works right now. And of course, uh, with this Child's Play that's gotten rebooted, I, there is talks of a sequel. But I don't know if they'll make one or green light one because I know the rights for Chucky are kind of all over the place right now. So anyone can do anything with them um, and stuff like that. Um, another bit of news, though, that's that's exciting is we're getting a Halloween sequel. Yay. Wait, really? Halloween. Yeah, yeah. Blumhouse did green light a Halloween sequel. David Gordon Green is returning to the director's chair to direct another Halloween sequel. And I think Jamie Lee Curtis is on board again, too. With the amount of success that that movie had being the highest grossing horror movie for a rated R movie in history if they didn't it'd be foolish well because see this was my thing was I know Danny McBride and David Gordon Green they like co-wrote the script together and stuff I think one other guy did too and they wrote this movie like it was going to be the last Halloween movie so like my whole intentions were okay 
even if this do- movie does succeed, which I knew it was gonna because we hadn't seen a Halloween movie in years, and to bring this iconic character back to the big screen with Blumhouse behind the production chair uh, was, was an exciting thing. It was like when they brought back Star Wars for the first time because we had not seen a Star Wars movie in so long, and when you finally saw Episode Seven go on screen, everyone lost their shit for that. That was like this for the horror community. When they brought yeah. back Michael Myers into the big screen, everyone lost their shit because we haven't seen Michael Myers, like a good, decent Michael Myers movie in so long. Um, there was somewhere along the line where like four through the rest of them, yeah, it was cool to see Michael Myers kill people, don't get me wrong, but they were they had no idea where they wanted to go with the story. And for them to just say, listen, we're going to take Halloween 1, and that's all we're going from. This is going to be a sequel from Halloween 1. This is going to be 40 years later. We're going to scrap the rest of the movies, and we're going to go from there. For them to actually step up and do that and not do it from Halloween 2 uh, was a big step on their part, and um, it, it worked out ultimately in the end. So um, I'm really looking forward to seeing what they have their ideas for in the, um, the sequel. Uh, another spoiler warning, but if you guys haven't seen Halloween 2018 by now, you guys are insane. But, of course, if you have seen Halloween 2018, you guys know at the end of the movie, uh, when they light the basement on fire, they actually pan back to that shot, and Michael Myers is not in the basement. He finds a way to escape. And then, after, of course, after the credits, we hear him breathe. So, yeah, they, they, they ultimately set it up. They knew they were going to do that. And I also heard that um, Blumhouse is actually, they I think they're working on getting the rights to Scream, too. Oh, wow. If if they could get the right to, to Scream and revamp Scream, that'd be awesome. And then if we could get Scream at Halloween Horror Nights, that would be amazing. Yeah. Uh, um, I can tell you right now, Blumhouse is going for all the major franchises right now. Yeah. and um, But just to comment back to Halloween, Michael Myers is the GOAT. And every single time he, he hits the – doesn't matter if it's a good one or a bad one, it's a good one. All right? It's not. All right? It's not. Anthony? It's not. Sucks. There's, there's bad. You <laughs> telling me four through six are good? Four through six are probably the worst in the franchise. You know Eddie's favorite is H two O. Listen, you're the worst in the franchise. How about that? I've been told that many times. <laughs> get in line, bub. Hey, yeah. you're a professional. Get it together. A professional. Get it together. Yeah, get yeah. It together. What is it? Yeah, get your, get your podcast more professional, man. <laughs> yep. Just slam on no. that guy, huh? But but uh, he is the goat, regardless. You know, er- everybody has like their their slip ups. Um, you can't go eight or seven movies without having, you know, a few duds in there. But this guy set the way, and I can't wait until the, the next movie comes out. This this previous one was a huge success. They did a great job with it. I know not everybody agrees, but men lie, women lie, numbers don't lie, and the numbers show that this movie Actually, was... if you want to talk about someone who set the way, that'd be Leatherface, my friend. No. 1974, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That's when it came out. Just saying. Okay. Uh, but <laughs> whatever. Let's get back to Scream. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so actually here's some more interesting news about Scream. I know that that was an MTV show, and um, they that was, did, It was dumb. It wasn't canceled, however. They filmed a whole season three, and now they're just waiting – on the release, so that's another franchise that the well, rights they, are. They co- did film a season. They three? filmed an entire season three. The only reason they haven't released it is because the rights are up in the air right now, and they're kind of. It's kind of a confusing process with the rights for that. But um, I had heard that the rights were kind of like everywhere right now, so they don't know uh, how to who's going to get them or not. That's why they're kind of waiting to release season three because the rights are kind of just everywhere right now. And they're no, because I really, I, as, as much as it didn't play to the original slasher film, it was kind of cool. I mean, it was a little bit too teen drama, but I was always curious to see who was the killer. And I, I didn't like the mask either. Yeah, each season was a different killer, wasn't it? Yeah, so I think far? so. Uh, I didn't like the mask, though. That was my only thing. But if Blumhouse can get their rights on, or, you know, the rights to Scream, um, I would love to see what they can do with that. If they can just kind of pay tribute to uh, Wes Craven, that is his other franchise that he... Uh, he uh, he did because I remember... There's actually a funny little Easter egg in that movie where... Um, because Wes Craven also created another horror franchise, a horror icon, Freddy Krueger. And um, there's an awesome, funny uh, Easter egg in the very beginning of the movie where he calls Drew Barrymore. And um, he tells, she asks him, what's your, what, you know, what's your favorite scary movie? And she says, Nightmare on Elm Street. And he goes, the original one? He goes, yeah. And he goes, yeah, because screw the sequels, am I right? Because he had nothing to do with the sequels. He only did the original one and New Nightmare. So... Um, yeah, I, I, I would like to see them do justice to Wes Craven. Maybe scrap the whole slate like they did with uh, um, 
Halloween and just go from one, uh, start a new timeline over because they can do that. Honestly, I, I feel they can. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing that. But uh, back to uh, the last, just so before we wrap this up, uh, final verdict on Chucky Sammy Go. Final verdict. Uh, I think it tried too hard to be modern at times. Um, and didn't pay enough homage to the original. I'm gonna give it maybe four and a half out of five, uh, four and a half out of ten. All right, four and a half out of ten. Eddie, what about you? I will say it's a fun trip to the movie theaters, but doesn't really help or damage the the like horror space too much. Um, I, I think where it's rated right now, like sixty something percent, is right where it should be. It's just decent enough that it's worth going to watch, but it's not going to blow your mind. Uh, me it. personally, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Sammy on that. I'm gonna, actually, I'm gonna just give it a four out of ten. Um, the what's really saved this movie for me was Mark Hamill. I'm just a huge Mark Hamill fan, and Aubrey Plaza. She's beautiful. Um, so them two alone, and I've always just been a fan of Aubrey Plaza since Parks and Rec. So um, that actually helped too. Um, but I have to say. Uh, this was, I think, one of the on par with. I think it came in number two, and they said as far as box office numbers goes, it did a lot better than expected. So, um, yeah, that 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 is just our final verdicts on Child's Play. If you um, want to watch a movie, though, watch Toy Story Four. It's better. Toy Story Four is good, very good, very good. Haven't seen it. Last thing we're gonna do, and something I haven't done in a while on the podcast, is give a special shout out to um, one of our sponsors, Shutter. If you use promo code MINDLESS on Shutter.com when you sign up, you get a 14-day free trial of their service, and they have a lot of fun stuff on there. A lot of the Halloweens on there, a lot of Stephen King stuff on there, a lot of amazing franchises. That is the Netflix for horror. That is the place to go to for horror movies, and I highly suggest you check it out. That is uh, Shutter.com. Sign up using um, promo code MINDLESS for a 14-day free trial. So go ahead and do that. Thanks for watching the Mindless Horror Podcast. Give it up for our host, Eddie. Thank you, Eddie, for being on Summer of Guests, um, Episode 3, Eddie. Episode 3, you are helping us kick off Summer of Guests, and we're yeah. going to keep it going. Um, summer Guests will be on a little – the Mindless Horror Podcast will not be on a hiatus, but Summer of Guests will be on a little hiatus until we have uh, a confirmed date for our, our um, other uh, – ho- what is it? Other, other guests. guests. That's the word you're looking guests. for. Uh, uh, the composer from Killer Clowns from Outer Space, uh, John Mazzari. He's supposed to be on the show sometime in the next couple of weeks, so that should be pretty fun. Um, oh, yeah, there's another thing I wanted to mention. Did anyone catch that Killer Clowns from Outer Space poster in Child's Play? Just me? I saw it. I immediately showed Sammy it. It, it was, it was. I told Sammy about it. But So I'm wanted... surprised you didn't give it a higher score because you're, like, obsessed with that movie. I, know, I right? am. And now, oh, yeah, now Child's Play is getting 7 out of 10 from Tony? No, it's yeah. still a standard of 4. I'm going to give it an 11. <laughs> three, of the, three of those stars are from that from that Killer Clowns poster. Um, but, and, yeah, I thought that was a cool thing. Did the bottom coming to Halloween Horror Nights? What happened? Did the poster say at the bottom coming to Halloween Horror Nights? Oh. So what no, did I don't think us? it did. No. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it said just for Orlando. <laughs> just for <Yeah>. Orlando. <laughs> <laughs> Never coming to LA. That's not yeah. true. We already we've already seen proof it is coming to LA. Just saying, yeah. it's not confirmed, but it's coming. Uh, but that was a cool Easter egg. But yeah, go ahead and um, yeah. So John Masari is going to be on the show. That's going to be very fun to interview him. Um, he's going to give us a date as soon as uh he lets us know when he's available, uh, which should be in the next couple of weeks, sometime in July. So that's when summer of guests will return. But the Milan Horror Podcast will still be here. Um, so and uh, thank you for watching. Make sure to. Go subscribe to our boy Eddie Tainment. You can see his YouTube channel actually in the back right there on the TV. Uh, he did that on purpose so everyone can go check it out. Um, mm-hmm. That's good product placement right there. Uh, you probably noticed it throughout the entire podcast. But, yeah, it did, and it stayed on this entire time. I'm surprised it didn't, like, go to black screen or anything. So that's cool. Nope. He had um, his screensaver. He's got his screensaver. <laughs> he just put the screensaver on. The that's that's no, funny. It's a smart TV YouTube on there smart you go. TV. Yeah. So he's got that going. So go ahead and subscribe to his channel. Go ahead and follow him on his social medias and stuff like that. Keep updated with his content. He's going to have a lot coming out this next couple weeks and this summer. So just be able to check his stuff out. Um, go ahead and, of course, subscribe to our channel if you're not yet subscribed. And welcome to the Madhouse if you guys are brand new. For all my inmates that are currently in the Madhouse, thank you for all your constant support on uh, my journey to 
what are we going to? 400 now? 400. Right. On the journey to four. Ne the next journey to four. Oh, yeah. And also be sure to subscribe to Eddie Tamit. I know I already just said it right now, but he's almost at 200, so we need to get him there. So, yeah, subscribe to Eddie Tamit. Go ahead and point at the background right there. There it is right there. Subscribe. It's there. Um, go ahead and follow us on social media, at the Knights of Horror on um, Instagram and at Knights of Horror on Twitter. And uh, go ahead and tweet at us, uh, direct message us some stuff if you guys direct. Feel free to, whatever. We'll be there. Um, but thanks for watching the Miles. Yeah, Podcast. wait, I got one more question, though. Have you been entertained? <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we uh, had a fun time. So thank you for joining us with another episode of Summer Guest, and we will see you guys uh, sometime in the next couple weeks. Bye-bye.